big sale, big savings at oldtimeradiodvd.com. All of our collections, the prices have been slashed. Pricing will be good until January the 1st, 2018, so don't wait. Buy today and enjoy for a lifetime at oldtimeradiodvd.com. You'll be glad you did. From Hollywood, California, we bring you the Smiths of Hollywood. As Bump Smith, age 10, Jan Ford. Mom! Mom! I hear the garbage man coming. As Nancy Smith, Brenda Marshall. Bill, the garbage man. Would you empty the garbage in the kitchen? As Bill Smith, Nancy's husband, Harry Von Zell. I'm in the bathtub. Uncle Cease, would you dump that garbage in the kitchen? For the crank the crest. Uh, but just as you say... <laughs> And that was Sir Cecil Smythe, Bill's English uncle, Arthur Treacher. Yes, it's the Smiths of Hollywood with music by Carl Hoff. <laughs> Presented by... It's the Smiths of Hollywood. And now meet attorney Bill Smith. Uh, now meet attorney Bill Smith. Oh, uh, Nancy, darling, I'm in the bathtub. Would you take it? Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Nancy Smith. And what a day this has been. Brother. It started with breakfast. his newspaper. And once in a while, dog gone it annoys me. <laughs> Bill, when we were married, didn't you promise to love, honor, and not read the paper at breakfast? Uh-huh. I can't even kiss you anymore without Dick Tracy breathing down my neck. Uh-huh. Bill, if you don't come out from behind that newspaper, I'm going to set fire to it. Uh-huh. Oh, you didn't even hear me. All right. I will light a match to it. Uh Uh-huh. Bill, I'm really going to. Uh Uh-huh. Your newspaper's on fire, darling. Uh Uh-huh. I have a big glass of water here. Would you like me to put the fire out, darling? Uh Uh-huh. Nancy, is something burning? Uh-huh. Well, aren't you going to do something about it? Uh-huh. Oh, someday I'll marry a woman who can make toast without... Hey, holy smoke, my newspaper. Fire! Fire! Oh, don't worry, darling. I'll save you. <laughs> what is the idea of soaking... Look at me. You... You uh, little... Uh, uh, is that any way to talk to someone who just saved your life? You're a femicidal maniac. First you try burning me at the stake, then drowning. Right. <sighs> What's your newspaper got that I haven't got? Little Abner. (laughs) And if you must know, Nancy, I was looking through the want ads for a job. Well, what's wrong with the one you have? A job for Uncle Cecil, Stoop. He's eating us out of house and home. Oh, now, darling, Cecil's a nice man. And what's one more mouth to feed? Plenty, if it's Uncle Cecil's. (laughs) I sometimes wonder, is that guy a mouth or is he a man? Hey, mouth for man. <laughs> what do you think of that? I think it's lousy. <laughs> Good morning, Tater. Good morning, Major. Well, listen to Data. <laughs> We're being very British, aren't we? Hearing Uncle C singing in a shower, does it? It smells to me like he's using the pet shaving lotion again, Pa. No, now, that is the last straw. Breaks my golf clubs, wrecks my car, drinks my scotch. Wonder when he's going to start wearing my clothes. 
My new gabardine. That is my favorite suit. It was, was it? Uh, excellent taste, William. Is, um, is breakfast ready? Uncle Cecil, before you sit down to breakfast, that is Bill's best suit. Oh, well, in that case, I'd better have a napkin. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'll tuck it under my chin. If I were you, I'd tuck it under both chins. Oh. Quiet, Bumps. Hurry now and drink your milk. It's Bill's strong tea. I'd rather have him built by the dentist like Uncle Steve. Bumps! <laughs> Bill, can I use the car today? I was planning to use the car today. Now, she didn't ask you. Nancy at least knows enough not to drive on the left-hand side of the street. Our club's having a rummage sale. Is there anything you'd like to get rid of? No. You... <laughs> Well, uh, yes, now that you mention it, I, uh... William, stop staring at me that way. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to use the money to buy food parcels for Europe. Yes, well, you better hurry. If Uncle Cecil stays in this country three more weeks, Europe will have to start sending food to us. Well, I've got $75 of the club money now, and we want to raise 300 more. That would feed 40 families. Yes, well, dear, I, for one, will be very glad when your club gets a new treasurer. Well, that's uncalled for, Bill. I haven't muddled the accounts at all. Hardly. Yeah. How about the $5 you couldn't account for last week? I found it. And I suppose you've never misplaced $5. Not of anyone else's money. Darling, as your lawyer, well, you can never be too careful when you handle other people's money. Right, Uncle Cecil? Right. By the by, old boy, could you advance the 10 so I'd have something to be careful with? <laughs> Uncle Cecil, if, if you get a job, you wouldn't have to bother asking me for money all the time. Well, no bother, William. I don't mind a bit. <laughs> Uncle Cecil doesn't want a job. He's more the banker type. Yeah, but it's sensible hours those fellas keep, nine to three. Oh, Uncle Cecil, there's a lot goes on in a bank after the doors close at three. Really? Well, I've always suspected as much. Sure. <laughs> Say, Bill, how about sending uh, Cecil to see Mr. Upjohn at the First National, huh? Well, what has Upjohn ever done to me? No, I'm serious. Now, after all, you are attorney for the First National, and Mr. Upjohn was very grateful to you when you helped him put across the community chest drive. Well, I know, but what could Uncle Cecil do at a bank? Maybe they need someone to scrape up chest gum or throw egg well. <laughs> what a hideous little mind that child has. <laughs> Well, I don't know, Bumps. That idea is not as crazy as it sounds. I think I will talk to up, John. I'll phone him right now. Bill, your breakfast is getting cold. Try phoning Mr. Upjohn later. Nancy, his secretary says she'll have him in a minute. I'll wait. Bumps, go upstairs and see if you have any old clothes for my rummage sale. How about my midi? It's time I started being a sweater girl. Sweater girl? I say, what is a sweater girl? That's a midi girl who eats her spinach and drinks her milk. Oh! <laughs> like, uh, like Popeye the Sailor. Oh, grow up, Buckle Cecil. I'll go get the things for you, Mom. Are you interested in the rum and sale, Uncle Cecil? Oh, yes, definitely, my girl. Where does it take place? Say, Uncle Cecil, I just spoke to Mr. Upjohn at the bank, and guess what? You're in. Really? How do I get out again? <laughs> no, no, I mean everything is Jake. Jake? Oh, is he in there with me? Oh. <laughs> uh, Bill means that you've got a job. I guess that's what you mean, don't you, Bill? Yes, if Cecil doesn't talk himself out of it. Mr. Upjohn wants to see you in a half hour. Does he now? Well, I'll be lolling in the hammock. Send him out, will you? <laughs> he wants to see you at the bank. Oh. You can get the bus at the corner. Oh, I could drive you later. No, he hasn't time. Now, here's a dollar for bus fare, Uncle Cecil. A dollar? Yes. Now that I'm a banker, here, here's your one. I'll take that ten. Now, just a second. Give me back that ten. Confound it, man. I only just borrowed it. Stop pounding me. Isn't that... <laughs> That's a fine thing. I get you a job and it costs me money. Oh, that's high finance for you. Well, cheerio, gungo. I'm off to the money vault. I'm talking to yourself. Bill, is there really a job at the bank? So Mr. Upjohn said. And dear Uncle Cecil ought to be perfect for it. 
Yes, just perfect for it. Hey, Mike, uh, where do I cash a check around here? The first window, my good man. My good man, he says. I'm a bank guard yet. What'll I think of next? A confounded nephew of mine coercing me into menial labor. He told me I was going to be front man. Imagine me a doorman. Hi, Uncle Steve. Get that get up. Yes, I'm afraid this would happen. What do you want? Pop said you're a bank director. Just came down to see what a bank director does. My good man, could you direct me to the president's office? Now I know. Shut up. Uh, <clears throat> that gate to the left, sir. You want me to go home and get my camera and take a picture of you? No, I don't want you to go home and get your camera and take a picture of me. Just go home. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, cheer up, Uncle Smitty. This job might turn out to be more exciting than you think. Look here. Why don't you go and find yourself a toy? Or a mate or whatever interests small girls and leave me alone. Well, here comes a customer. Boy, what a load of that figure. Yes, it's quite a load of it, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, are you in charge around here? I came here to check my billing. Mm, this is a bank, madam. Are you looking for a bank or a weighing scale? This is the first national bank, isn't it? I had a letter from you people yesterday saying I was a little short. Oh, I wouldn't take it personally, madam. <laughs> oh, of all the incidents, I have a notion to have you fired. Nothing but delight me more, old girl. Oh, girl! Well, I like that. That you do, old girl. Cheerio. <laughs> I say you do have some amazing creatures over here in the colonies, don't you? <laughs> Uncle Steve? Keep the money around here. How should I know? Now, look, child, you make the feet even more conspicuous in this dratted uniform. Now, run and catch a bird or something, will you? Oh, Mr. Smythe, Sir Cecil, Mr. Upjohn, the president, wants to see you in his office. Really? Oh, probably wants to raise my salary. Be with him in a jiffy. Oh. Well, well, Mr. Upjohn. Uh, hello, Sir Cecil. Come in. Thank you. I say, don't get up, John. Don't get up, John. I say, stop it, get it up. Stop that, yeah. You know, sometimes I wish my name was Smith. Up, Smith, up, Smith. I don't see the humor to that. Oh. Mind if I take a cigar? Yes. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. And how did the first day on the job go? The question you've just asked me makes the 243rd unnecessary question of the day. Yes. As a matter of fact, that's why I wanted to speak to you. A couple of people said you were curt. Me, curt? You sure they meant me? Well, I always say a word to the wise is sufficient. We pride ourselves on being friendly here. I'm terribly sorry, really, I am. Is, is that why you sent for me? Uh, yes. I just thought I'd mention it. Oh, I thought you might be considering me for a more important position. But maybe after you've been with us longer. Mm, I suppose this is learning the job from the outside in. I say, I say, is that money on your desk? I thought you kept it in vaults. Mm, that's it. This? Oh, no, this is worthless money. Worthless? Looks good to me. Well, it went through many hands before we spotted it here at the bank. Spotted it, eh? How careless of you. I don't, uh, I don't see what a few spots matter. <laughs> eh? Oh, oh man, you British have a better sense of humor than you get credit for. Uh. Oh, excuse me just a minute. Hello? Up, John speaking. Uh, this is the Cooper Radio Survey. Uh, who's sponsoring the program to which you are listening? This is a bank, madam. The businessman's friend. Well, hang on. I'll connect you with my radio. You mustn't miss this.
know who's sponsoring the Smiths of Hollywood. Well, thank you. I'll remember. Why is it those radio surveys never ask me if I like what I'm listening to? Oh, oh, you still here, Sir Cecil? You know, I've been looking at this money. Are you sure it's worth this? Positive. Uh, what do you do with it? It goes back to Washington. I suppose they burn it. Burn it? Of course, in Europe, we always did say you Americans had money to burn, but I never believed it before. Excuse me, Mr. Upjohn, but there's a man to see you outside. Oh, yes, excuse me. Now, about this money, I, um, I say I seem to be talking to myself. That money worth this? I just can't believe it. He's probably only tried it on people who have too much of it anyway. <laughs> Must be lots of people who aren't so fussy about a little spot here and there. <laughs> you know, they ought to give it another chance before they burn it. <laughs> Oh, are you still here? I thought I sent you home. Gee, Wilkins, what are all the cabbage? Cabbage? Greenback, dog skins, Missoula. Are you speaking boogie woogie? <laughs> Uncle Steve, what are you going to do with the money? Save it from a horrible fate, I hope. Bunce, if your uncle is right, Mr. Upjohn is man enough to admit he's wrong, I should at least wind up as vice president. See you at dinner time. Another beer here, Mac. Leave off the set. Ah, keep your shirt on. What do you want, Bub? Bub? Who's he? That's you, Bub. Well, then, Bub will have a glass of bubbly. Ho, 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 yes. But first, my good man, will you take this money in exchange? I never turned down no money yet. Hey, what a roll. You must be a terrific crap shooter. Crap shooting? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing like that. I left my fouling piece in England. <laughs> you shouldn't be flashing such a wad around. You look like a banker. I say you're a discerning chap, aren't you? As a matter of fact, I, I am in banking. If you ever require the service of a bank... Uh, me, I don't trust nobody. I keep mine in the old stock. Uh, mm. Hey, there was a guy around here a minute ago that could use a bank. Uh, hey, Mac, come here. Uh, that's the guy on the end of the bar. He has some checks he wants cashed. Me, I wouldn't cash my own brother's check. Yes, well, you probably know your brother. Hmm? Uh, if he wants to cash a check, squeeze a drink out of him. Really, although I may look like it, but I'm not a juice extractor. <laughs> Holy smokes. Where'd you get the wad? I told you, the guy's a banker. <laughs> hey, no kidding there. Can you cash some checks? I, I didn't get to the bank in time. That's all, boy, if you don't mind this spotted money. Blood money, huh? What racket's you in? Selling homes to veterans? <laughs> well, money's money to me. How much you got there? Looks like enough to choke a horse. And I haven't tell it, it tell the truth, but uh, a horse would have a hard time swallowing it, wouldn't he? <laughs> well, uh, could you cash a couple of hundred dollars for me? Well, if you don't object to this money, and I say, if you don't have a regular bank, why not come to the First National? There's one of our cards. Be sure and say I sent you. Well, now I've seen everything. Bankers cruising for business like taxi cabs. Here, have one on me. <laughs> Uh, may I come in, Mr. Upjohn? It's all right. Don't get up, John. I don't intend. <laughs> uh, where did you go? I'll come to that. I'll, uh, mind if I take one of your cigars, old chap? I think I deserve one. Did you take those bills off my desk? Now, before we go into that, I want to talk to you as a friend, you understand. Uh, now, uh, how long have you been on this job? Here at the bank? Twenty-three years. Ah, oh, yes. Well, it couldn't be inexperienced then, could it? No. <laughs> no, probably too close to the job. Yes, must be it, yes. Mr. Upjohn, why don't you take a long vacation? Yes. What? You know that money you showed me? It was perfectly good. Oh, smart, come to the point. I got rid of it with no trouble at all. Got rid of it? Yes, yeah, saved the bank $200. Oh, Gabriel, Steve. You didn't put that money in circulation. Yes, I did. Yes. And here, Mr. Upjohn, are the checks I took in exchange. It's not a bad day's work, eh? Huh? Oh, smile quickly now. Who did you give the money to? Oh, some chap I encountered in a pub. At the pub? Yes, he was very grateful. Uh, 
I knew it was good money. I, you know, I really advise a vacation for you. A vacation? If it gets around, our bank is giving out counterfeit bills. <laughs> I'll get a vacation, all right. Oh, you deserve it, yes. Counterfeit? Did you say counterfeit? I said counterfeit. Ah, yes, I was afraid I heard correctly. Uh, here's your cigar back, Mr. Upton. Smart, I told you that money was counterfeit. You didn't tell me it was counterfeit. You said it was worthless. Worthless money, counterfeit money, what's the difference? Why can't you learn to understand English? I do, old boy. Worthless money, counterfeit money. Why can't you learn to speak well, English? English. Oh, 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 oh. Aren't you home awful early? Oh, your mother has the car. I took an early bus to avoid the jam. Uncle Cecil around? He's looking at the bank. Yes. I hope Mr. Upjohn never holds this against me. I don't think you need to worry. Uncle Cecil was in there pitching. I just left him. Yeah. <laughs> How does he look as a doorman? Swell. But Uncle Smitty is headed for bigger things. What? I couldn't have misjudged the old fossil, could I? Well, what do you mean, bigger things? Well, I'm not quite sure, but... Well, hi, Uncle Steve. I was just telling Pop what a swell dormant you are. William, I'll never trust you again. Telling me I was going to be front man at the bank. <laughs> well, you are, aren't you, Uncle Cecil? Say, did you and Up John hit it off all right? Hit it off? No, almost, but it stopped short of blows. Yes. What stopped short of blows? Oh, dear, so soon. William, William, if that's Up John, say I just joined the Foreign Legion. <laughs> What do you call... Wait till I answer this. Hello? Hello, Bill? Yes? Has that blasted uncle of yours told you what's happened? We just got home. What's the matter? He gave out over $200 in counterfeit money. He... No. Yes. Why, that's terrible. His bond will cover it, of course. Oh, that's not the point. The FBI will be on the poor soul's tail and then those bills get in circulation. Well, listen, you better get hold of the poor guy and explain before he passes out any of that money. Well, how? Sir Fogbound never even got his name. All the checks were made out to cash. Well, that fellow could probably bring suit. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're our attorney. Oh, yeah, so I am. Well, hold on. I'll be right down. Yeah, there are the checks. All cash, no endorsement. Yes, Helen Matthews, Jane Faulkner. Here's one from Ann Sheridan. Right. Say, did you call these people and ask them who they gave cash checks to today? I can't reach them. Ann Sheridan's business manager said she was going to some sort of a charity rummage sale. What? That's my only lead so far. Wait a minute, did you say rummage sale? Yes, but who's holding a rummage sale? Mm -hmm. Rummage sale. <laughs> now, isn't it a small world? What do you mean? Oh, I mean, be of good faith. Don't worry. Give me the checks and cheer up, John. <laughs> Leave it to Sherlock Smith. <laughs> Bring all the fenders with you, Nancy? Oh, why, Bill, did you come out to open the garage doors for me? I'll put the car in later. Well, isn't it fashionable to kiss your husband this season? Oh, it's fashionable for me. But just let some other woman try kissing my husband. <laughs> oh, Bill, I had the most exciting day. Well, let's hear about it. Oh, people were so nice, we took in over $200 to buy food for overseas. Imagine. Yes. I'd had to buy food packages for 40 families. Oh, golly, I'm proud of you. Did you, uh, deposit the money? No, I didn't have time. I got it right here in my purse. Oh, I guess my purse is in the back seat. Two hundred dollars, that's quite a haul, darling. Oh, people can really be so nice. A uh, Bill, see if my purse is in the glove compartment. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, I don't see it, Nancy. Oh, you'd have been so proud of my auctioneering, Bill. It isn't in the glove compartment? Nope. Well, it must be. Let me look. Well, something dreadful's happened. What, dear? Well, my purse is gone. With oh. all those checks. That's tough. Well, don't just stand there. Do something. Do what? Well, something. Oh, Bill, what do I do? Well, first, I'd hire a good lawyer. Lawyer? You don't think people are going to believe you just lost $200? But I did lose it. Bill Smith, don't you think for a minute that me? I... Me? Not me, dear. But, of course, I'm not a judge. Bill. The courts are full of such cases. I lost one like this just last week. Unfortunate woman got a year for embezzlement. Oh, how horrible. Yeah. Well, I'd better start calling people at once. Oh, no, no. As your lawyer, I advise against that. Well, I have to do something. All right. Now, I advise you to just put your head on my shoulder. <laughs> That's it. No, 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 no. No tears. 
Now, Nancy Smith, I want you to repeat a magic phrase. Say, I'll never be careless with money again. Go ahead, say it. Oh, I'll never be careless with money again. That's right. <laughs> oh, Bill, don't be cruel. I didn't mean to do it, honest. Of course not, darling. And now, reach in my right coat pocket. Mm-hmm. That's it, there. Oh, the checks. Presto. All 11 of them. <laughs> How did you get them? Nancy, I am a man of many secrets. You took them. Oh, Bill, the scare you gave Did me. <laughs> You're horrid. <laughs> oh, Nancy, my shit. No. Oh, stop it. No, no. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, 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 The scare Bill gave me about those checks. I thought I'd really lost them, and I was mad enough to scalp Bill. You know, I still can't figure out how he got the checks. Oh, excuse me a moment. Hello. Uh, Mrs. Smith? This is Fred up John at the bank. Say they nabbed the man that took the checks out of your car. What? Mm-hmm. He tried to cash one of the bills at the racetrack. He has quite a record. Uh, I suppose uh, Cecil uh, deserves some of the credit. I thought it was a little harsh with him. Uh, is he there? I'd like to apologize. Oh, uh, well, uh, this is all beyond me, Mr. Upjohn. Uh, just a minute, I'll put Uncle Cecil on. Uncle Cecil, Mr. Upjohn wants to speak to you. Upjohn, tell him I'm not here. He probably wants to hire me back. <laughs> you, you go and talk to him, you dope. Maybe he's changed his mind. But I haven't. No, William, I don't want to work there anymore. Listen, Uncle Cecil, he didn't mean all he said. That's not the point. But William, employees frequenting pubs, handing out counterfeit money, I say, is that any way to run a bank? And now, a word from our sponsor. Dick Knight directs Andrew Hickok, producer. Tonight's cast also included Sarah Burney, Howard McNear, Jim Doyle, and Tyler McVeigh. 